Hi, Dr. Corey, naturopathic doctor for Thrive on Life in Brighton, Michigan. And here we are tonight on Facebook Live with the Better Health Store. This is really interesting, you know? We've all been through quite a crazy last year. I think we all can agree to that. Um, I used to do tons of classes, in-person classes at the Better Health Store. I love Saturday afternoons, but that took a lot. It took a lot, like driving to the store, sitting there. I know my classes were supposed to be an hour, but they usually went to an hour and a half or longer <laughs> with question and answers. Um, but that took a lot. So this is a really nice platform, this virtual platform. And my plan is to do a class every month or every six weeks because this is a great way we can just flip it on in the privacy of our home. We can do, you know, our nightly routine and just tune in, you know? So I think this is really going to be a fun time together. So tonight we're going to talk about the metabolic pathway to weight loss and so many other great beneficial things in the body. Um, you know, I taught a lot on the ketogenic lifestyle, and I still 100% think that is just a hands-down, great way approach to eating and weight loss. But it's really challenging. It's really challenging to limit some of these foods that we just love, like berries, carrots, you know, simple foods that you're, you just can't really do if you want to be in a full state of ketosis. So how can we tap into that metabolic pathway without having to do that. And so that's what this class is about. Sure, we can incorporate aspects of the ketogenic diet into this, and we'll talk about that. But how can we take advantage of this main metabolic switch to benefit all aspects, okay? So this is gonna be a fun class. I'm gonna make it pretty concise and to the point. And then at the end of this, if you have any questions, I want you to email me. Um, my website is thriveon.life. We'll post it at the end. And my email is Corey, C-O-R-E-Y, at thriveon.life instead of .com. So feel free to email me and I will answer any of, any of your questions. So let me just dive into a little bit about myself before we start. So a lot of you guys have heard my story. I'm not going to make it long and drawn out, but I, as a little girl, was interested in music. I sang. I went to college for music. Um, but along the path, I just became interested in health. And I remember my aha moment. I was going to a music class in college, and I was driving my little Ford Escort along, and I didn't even have a a CD player was like a cassette tape player on my lap listening to Dr. Royal Lee from Standard Process speak about vitamin B12 deficiencies in the human body. And I remember I just stopped the car and I'm like, why am I going to school for music? I need to be doing this. So, you know, I did finish what I needed to in music, but ended up going back to school to become a um a holistic nutritionist and finally went on to become a naturopathic doctor. So that's kind of my story in a nutshell. I also really had some health challenges myself. I suffered from Lyme disease, parasite infection. It really riddled my body and I found the answers all in natural medicine. Different modalities from changing my thoughts to getting out in the sun to beautiful homeopathy and herbs no pharmaceuticals or anything, and here I am standing as a testament to natural health. So that's my story. Okay, so we're gonna dive into this main metabolic pathway. So this pathway is called adenosine monophosphate protein kinase activator. I'm only gonna say that once, because that's long. It's called AMPK pathway for short. So this AMPK pathway is the main metabolic switch in our body. And it deals with catabolic aspects. So anabolic, we know if we, you know, the anabolic steroids building up or, you know, going to the gym, all these guys want this anabolic state where you're building muscle. Well, catabolic state is the breaking down of things. And one isn't necessarily good or or not. It's It's this polarity between the two. We're always finding, we want to find that homeostasis or that balance. But the AMPK pathway is really that catabolic, that breaking down of stuff, the, the breaking down of old tissues in the body, the breaking down of body fat, the recycling of, of stuff, right? And so how do we activate that? 
So we're going to talk about um, the benefits and how we activate that. So some of the benefits of this pathway, if, if we're activating this AMPK pathway, glucose levels are low. Just like we talk about the ketogenic diet, diet, when ketones are high in the body, glucose is low. When this AMP cap pathway is, is uh, activated, our glucose levels are low. So think about all the people that suffer. There's just a tremendous amount of people that suffer from metabolic um, disease, from diabetes to just any sort of metabolic issues going on in the body. This is a must, an absolute must for them. Okay, so we know that this helps to regulate blood sugar. It's going to drop the glucose levels. Other things that it works on are, are inflammatory responses in the body. So think about all disease processes are really, there's an inflammatory process going on at the root. So when we activate this main metabolic pathway in the body, this AMPK pathway, inflammation just decreases. We can move better. We're not feeling the swelling or you know stiffness in the body, and those disease states are are you know raging because of just silent inflammation, right? So it also benefits longevity or the you know just age, nice aging process because it really deals with autophagy or the breaking down of tissues. The autophagy is really just eating of self. I know that sounds kind of weird, but the breaking down or the recycling of old disease tissues or you know cellular debris that's just not serving us anymore. When we, um, and we'll talk about this, but one of the aspects in this is maybe periods of fasting or intermittent fasting. And when we take that load off the body of constantly eating all the time, like 80% or so of our energy when we eat is used for digestion. That's a that's a tremendous amount of energy. But when we can take that load off the body and get that energy back by periods of fasting, we have all this reserve energy to just start the healing process. So this is really important. So another great thing with this uh, AMPK pathway is increased focus and energy, right? When we're, again, taking that load off the body from constantly eating or the sugar cycle, we have so much more reserve energy. You know, I used to um, weight train. I used to do endurance running and things like that. And I remember when we used to carb load. I would, you know, pastas the night before or those little goo packs we used to eat. And and I remember being out running and you would just hit a wall sometimes. <laughs> You're like, my reserve calories are spent. But when we're doing these periods of intermittent fasting, when we're switching on this AMPK pathway, we're switching into that ketone or those reserve calories that we have infinite amount within our, stored within our body. So we are finding uh, athletes that are switching this pathway on or that are getting in a state of ketosis. Their hand-eye coordination's better. Their you know, endurance uh, over time is going up. Their runs are faster. Their runs are longer. They recover e much more easily. Think about that. The inflammation's down. You know, their, their, their DNA, they're cleaning up their cellular debris. On a scale, there's just so much improvement athletic-wise. And then one of the last things, and, and again, this goes way beyond the scope of this class, but I'm just touching on some of the key aspects, is hormones. And we have so many people with just hormonal um, issues, women with estrogen dominance, men with estrogen dominance, and we'll talk about this with some of the supplements coming up here, um, women with infertility. So this switching this on, again, it takes the body in that state of regeneration. And so the endocrine system can start to flow better. The pituitary finally is speaking to the thyroid, which is considered the third ovary. Things just start to line up in the body. So we're just finding uh, women that are, are switching on this pathway are able to conceive better. Women that have gone through menopause years are just balancing out their hormones better, not getting that horrible weight gain around the middle. Um, and same with men, just that estrogen dominance that we find in men where they're, you know, finding some characteristics about their body that they just don't like is really starting to change. So really uh, great, great shifts with that. So those are just some of the highlights. So now let's talk about the ways. We're going to talk about five specific ways that we can switch on this pathway. Okay. So the first one 
is what I told you, um, what I hinted on with the ketogenic diet, and that is periods of intermittent fasting or fasting. Okay, so let's talk about what that looks like, because I know that's scary for some people. They're like, fasting? I like my food. I don't think I can do that. It's really not that hard. So I'll give you a couple different um, scenarios, okay? So one is what we call intermittent fasting. And I know that a lot of you that have come to my classes before, we've talked about this, and you're pros at this, but let's go over what that looks like. So intermittent fasting is nothing more than taking your window of eating into a smaller amount of time in each day. So instead of grazing throughout the day, you're putting little bites in your mouth every you know, couple hours. And we used to do that. I remember weight training. It was like, okay, every two hours you're eating a small little mini meal. But now what we're doing is we're shortening that window of time. So let's say we had our dinner at night around 6, 7 p.m. And that's it. We can drink water before bed or tea without sugar. You know, nothing that's going to influence, you know, that blood sugar spike or anything. So let's say 7 o'clock we're done. We just drink water or tea before bed, go to bed, wake up in the morning, same thing. You're fasting in the morning. So you're drinking your water, your warm tea, or your cold tea infusion, and you're waiting until about 11, 12 o'clock for that first meal. A lot of people naturally feel like that. That, you know, it's, it's sort of a natural thing in the morning, and in Ayurvedic tradition, you know, they they absolutely start breaking the fast breakfast later because it's a lot to put a heavy meal in the body in the morning. Our uh, our colon, every two hours in traditional Chinese medicine, there's a different organ system that has energy that's kind of infused in it. And the colon is those morning hours. So imagine putting something really heavy in the body. The body doesn't know what to do with that in the morning. So it is just a natural rhythm to you know, kind of ride into late morning hours before we break our fast, before we have our, really it would be more like lunch then, but a late breakfast or something. So let's say our first meal is 11, 12, okay? And then you might have a snack if you, if you need to, just a small snack, and then dinner, okay? And obviously, you know, we're not gonna go into a lot of the food choices here like we do in the ketogenic diet style, but you're eating in that sense where we're really representing good quality fats, right? Good quality fats, lots of good olive oils, um, avocado, you know, the good animal fat from clean sources that we can get at places like the Better Health Store. Um, you know, just good quality fats that are represented in our meal. Nice quality proteins, but we're looking for fat as, you know, a, much more, um, there's more caloric value in each meal than say 10 years ago, right? Where it was like, oh, let's replace fat with sugar. So we're really looking for a lot of caloric value of fat in each meal, moderate amount of protein, and then um, what we're having is very minimal carbohydrates. And the carbohydrates would be like lots of vegetables and things like that. We're not looking at a lot of grains or pastas or anything like that, okay? So we are following aspects of that ketogenic style diet, okay? But our window of eating now is from about 12 to 6, 12 to 7, and then we're fasting the rest of that time, okay? So we have like a six-hour window of eating, maybe seven-hour window of eating, and then we have like an 18, 17 to 18-hour window of fasting. And what that does to the body Number one, it switches on the AMPK pathway. Number two, it takes that load off the body of constantly digesting. So we have all this reserve energy for breaking down stuff, for tissue repair, for all those great processes in the body, okay? So that's number one, okay? Let's look at number two. So number two would be intense exercise, okay? So I know. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of you that are like, I don't like exercising. I personally love it, okay? I, I, it's something that fuels my soul, but we're all so individual with our likes and dislikes. My big suggestion, if you don't love exercising, is do this that I'm gonna talk about right now. So we're finding that you don't have to go out on these huge long runs or these big long cardio sessions. What is more powerful are these 
it's called high intensity interval trainings or this HIT training, or the Dr. Mercola talks about peak eight, where you do a, like a 20 minute cardio session. And over that 20 minutes, you ray, you spike your heart rate eight times. So let's say you do about a two minute warm up. Say you're just walking, say walking is your style, right? You're doing a two minute warm up, just walk slow. And then at that second minute, for about 45 seconds to a minute, you push it as hard as you can. Maybe you take off in a light run, but you spike your heart rate for you and then you bring it down for a minute, minute and 15 seconds, okay? And then you take it back up after a minute for about 45 seconds to a minute and you bring it down. You do this eight times over the course of this 20 minutes and then you have a two minute cool down at the end. What that does is switches on that AMPK pathway. So we got periods of intermittent fasting, we got high intensity exercise. So whatever that looks like for you, I mean, if you're a really high endurance athlete, then that is pushing it big time, right? But if you're someone that's just dabbling and, and trying to get out there and starting to walk, then that is just walking slow for the first minute, first two minutes, and then try to huff it for 30 seconds to 45 seconds, then you cool it back down. Just shoot for peaking your heart rate a few times. Maybe you don't do eight times off the bat. Maybe it's four times, but that's the goal. And we're finding these short 20 minute high intensity exercise sessions are phenomenal for activating this pathway, okay? So again, we got periods of fasting, intermittent fasting, high intensity exercise. The third way is through um, cold temperatures. So this cryotherapy, <laughs> We probably, it's like sci-fi stuff, right? Let's just freeze up the body. But there is stuff like that. So this cryotherapy, this really cold stuff, um, cold, cold therapy for the body. Um, and then if you've seen Wim Hof, I don't know if any of you guys know him, he's called the Iceman. So he takes that plunge into the freezing cold water. He has these amazing breath exercises that he does to slow down his metabolic rate and then jump in the cold water. But what this cold water does for you is it helps with circulation, it helps with lymphatic um, congestion, it helps stimulate T cells, the immune system of the body, but it also has been shown to activate this AMPK pathway. Okay, so maybe we're not gonna be able to do the cryotherapy. Maybe we're not gonna take the polar plunge but we can do this in our shower. And this is called hydrotherapy. And I'm sure you guys have heard of this. I'm sure some of you have tried it before. So at the end of your shower, turn it as cold as you can and stand in the water for a couple minutes, okay? And what this does is all those things that I just talked about in the body, helps with circulation, helps with um, boosting T cells and immune system function. You can actually alternate back and forth a couple minutes, you know, pretty warm to hot, couple minutes cold, almost like that peak eight back and forth. And that is an amazing form of hydrotherapy. It's been around for thousands of years with um, natural health and aspects of healing the body. But this, along with those other two things we talked about, exercise and fasting, will really throw you into this metabolic, will really throw this metabolic switch on, I should say. And, and all the things we're talking about tonight, I really want you to incorporate all of them. I mean, if you can incorporate them and rotate through them, it's not just one thing that's just gonna switch it on. It's dabbling in all of them. It's bringing it all together so you have a holistic approach to this metabolic pathway, okay? Um, I'm going to refer to my notes just so I don't leave out anything in this next section. So this next section would be your high antioxidant foods, okay? So it has been shown that foods that are replete in antioxidants are going to stimulate this pathway, okay? And so let's just look at some of these. And please take notes. And if you have questions, feel free to email me. Um, but your fresh leafy greens. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. It's full of, of good folate, which we need for all our you know, metabolic processes as well in the body. But lots of the leafy greens, the, the um, I personally love arugula. That is my hands down favorite green. But your mustard greens, your dandelion greens in the springtime, phenomenal for liver gallbladder function. Um, 
broccoli, artichoke, green beans. So we got some of our other vegetables in there, all very, very stimulating for this AMPK pathway. Your green teas and really any other teas, your white teas, your black teas, but especially that green tea. And we're going to talk about one of the supplements derived from green tea too. Um, good quality coffee. So um, making sure you get good quality stuff. You know, Dave Asprey with Bulletproof that I know Better Health Store sells is quality. He really does good quality tests too because coffee is known to have molds and toxins in it completely free from that. So I would really look to something like Dave Asprey's coffee. Um, cocoa, cacao, like the little cacao nibs or like really good dark, dark um, organic cacao is phenomenal. Um, berries. So this is one of the things on the ketogenic diet you can't have too much of, but you know, if you do it right, we got tons of antioxidants that's switching on this pathway. Um, grapes. So we'll talk about another supplement that is switching on this pathway that is derived from grapes. Olive oil, a really good quality extra virgin olive oil, not the garbage you can get at, you know, some of the other grocery stores, but really good extra virgin olive oil that they sell at the Better Health Store. Pomegranate, so we got the, you know, the palm drink that you can um, get or just a really good fresh pomegranate. Slice it in half and eat those seeds. The seeds too, because they're full of tannins, um, just really good aspects that are in the seeds. Um, apples. So apples are known to really stimulate this AMPK pathway. Good red wine, which we'll talk about with one of the supplements. So I'm not saying this is a free pass to just go and drink all the red wine in the world. There's that balance between it. But I can tell you, if you can find a good biodynamic organic wine, I'm sure that the Better Health Store sells it. I haven't been through the wine aisle lately, but even if it's just organic, but if you can find a good biodynamic wine too, that goes a step beyond organic and it's phenomenal. Really, really great. And we're with biodynamics too, we're getting all those glyphosates naturally out of the soils and things. So that's important. Um, onions. So onions are great too. They're very sulfur bearing foods. So they actually help to chelate and pull toxins out of the body as well, but they're known to stimulate this AMPK pathway. Herbs like uh, cinnamon and turmeric, phenomenal. Cinnamon's great as well for blood sugar regulation. It's high in chromium, so it too will help to regulate blood sugar. And then turmeric is very high in boron, which is amazing for um, inflammation, for bone density. It's the chief mineral in our cerebral spinal fluid. It's also very anti-radiation. So turmeric is great for that. And then nuts are very good for this AMPK pathway, specifically pecans, which happen to be one of my favorite nuts. So those are just, again, not the full extensive list, but those are some of the top antioxidant foods. If we consume along with the cold temps, high intensity exercises, uh, exercise periods of fasting or intermittent fasting. And if we backtrack really quick to the fasting, you can do longer fasts as well. I just talked about that short fast, but you could do a full day fast where you're stopping at dinner one night and going the next day until dinner and then just doing water, maybe water with some lemon in it, um, some teas throughout the day. So longer fasts are great as well. Couple day fasts, um, but you know, for people that are just venturing into it, that period of intermittent fasting where you're just, you know, six hours, seven hours is a really good start, okay? So now we're gonna jump into supplementation, okay? And this will wrap up the rest of the class. So I'm just gonna touch on five. There's really not a lot of supplements that actually completely stimulate that AMPK pathway. But I've picked out five that are phenomenal for doing this. And just remember that they all, because they stimulate this pathway, they're all gonna work on metabolic syndrome, every single one of them. Um, my big suggestion though is with each one, and I'm gonna tell you milligrams or dosage, like give you like a range as well. I think incorporating at least three to four of these, we're gonna go over five, would really give you the best results. Just one, 
you're gonna reap some of the other benefits of the supplement, but I think it's the combination. So buying you know, three to four to even five of these and combining them all or doing a cycle of them where you take one, two days, another one, two days, that is where you're gonna reap the full benefit of switching on this pathway, okay? So number one, we're gonna talk about the supplement DIM capital D, capital I, capital M. And that for, stands for diindolyl methane, okay? I'm not gonna say that too, like the adenosine monophosphate, no, AMPK. <laughs> so DIM is a substance that we get from uh, eating, cru it's, it's a breakdown that we get in our body from eating cruciferous vegetables, like our Brussels sprouts, our cabbage, our broccoli, cauliflower. And what it does is it works on estrogen in the body. So it's thought to work and normalize estrogen levels in the body. So we get like imbalance or estrogen dominance in some people, maybe they're just more genetically prone to that. Also our world really pushes us that way too because we live in a, a sea of toxins, a sea of plastics, which carry a lot of these xenoestrogens or these false estrogens. So we're carrying around the, you know, and walking around with just a lot of people in estrogen dominance and men, men included, right? And, and they get these characteristics of maybe uh, like some, almost like a woman characteristic. And when we can convert that estrogen into good usable estrogen or balance it out with a DIM, we see all those unwanted side effects like larger breasts, breasts that are starting to form in men, you know, extra weight around the hips and thighs and belly just start to diminish. This also really stops that aromatase enzyme in men from that conversion of their testosterone into estrogen. So this is phenomenal for them. It really works on acne um, and even adult acne. Um, it is amazing metabolic one in the sense that it upset AMPK pathway, but it really balances hormone aspects for that, okay? So this one, supplementation of about 20, oh sorry, 20, 200 milligrams a day, you were gonna take 20 and it was gonna do nothing. <laughs> 200 milligrams a day has really been shown to be optimal for that AMPK pathway and really reaping the benefits of all the um, hormonal things that I just discussed. So really, really good quality supplement I would highly recommend, okay? So the first one that I'm recommending is DIM. Second one, one of my all-time favorites, I've used a long time in naturopathy, and I didn't realize until I started really studying this pathway that this one is like one of the top for AMPK activation. I always looked at this next one for its microbial action, for its action with gastritis in the body, et cetera, but not till I really started studying the AMPK pathway did I realize all its marvelous benefits. So this is berberine. So again, berberine is um, in that same classification as what metformin does. So the, the pharmaceutical metformin that people take for you know, metabolic issues, diabetes, et cetera, bringing down the a, uh, A1C levels. So um, what, we, what berberine is, it's a chemical constituent that isolated from some certain um, plants. So like golden seal is one, um, barberry is another, Oregon grape, which is great for liver gallbladder. So it's a chemical constituent. It's very orange in color, very pigmented, and it is amazing for um, E. coli, for bacterial issues in the body. It's also a great one for protozoans or helminths or what we call worms in the body. So it's got anti-parasitic action. It's also got anti-fungal um, action as well. So it's amazing for inflammatory conditions. So if any of these other things are also issues that you struggle with, look to this one as maybe one of your top three to four. But berberine, it switches on that AMPK pathway um, like DIM does as well, but berberine, it, it's almost like, it's kind of funny, like I feel like I'm on a commercial, but it's like an exercise in the bottle. It really does. It drops your glucose levels and it will help to almost simulate exercise without exercise, like what metformin does in the body. So this one, we want to look to about 500 milligrams three times a day for optimal weight loss. So this is one that you would 
try to look for you know the pill that comes in about 500 milligrams and then you would take it morning lunch dinner time okay so one of my favorites i've used it for a really long time but i really didn't know until i started studying this ampk pathway in the last couple of years that it was so it's one of the top okay next one i hinted at it when we went through with all the foods but this is resveratrol so phenomenal one that's been around for a while we've taken this a lot for like ox oxidative stress in the body people look to resveratrol um, you know for cancers for alzheimer's for brain things going on i love it i recommend it a lot to all my clients for blood uh, pressure issues because resveratrol increases nitric oxide production so this is one that when we're doing that high intensity um, training that I talked about, we're raising our nitric oxide levels, which switches on that AMPK pathway. Nitric oxide helps to dilate the blood vessels. We get flow to different organs. It's great for erectile dysfunction, etc. cetera. Um, but resveratrol is known to do that, okay? So it switches on this AMPK pathway, amazing for oxidative stress, amazing for inflammatory things, for Alzheimer's, phenomenal for blood pressure. This one, oh, and cancer too, but that falls in the oxidative stress. I'm just looking down at my notes. So this one dosage would be our 200 to 600 milligrams daily, okay? And you can split that up. I, I, I tend to like and recommend to clients that we find smaller doses and do them morning and night rather than just taking a, a single dose one time. The body likes you know, little nutrients over time. So that would be my recommendation. So if you wanted to do something like a 600 milligram and push it to the higher end, that you're taking like 300 in the morning, 300 at night, okay? And resveratrol, if we just look at, we already talked about, you know, I hinted at it with the red wine and the grapes, but it also is known uh, to be, and most of the supplements that you'll find are from Japanese knotweed. So Japanese knotweed is really high in resveratrol. That's a great one for Lyme disease. Um, we'll find a lot of Japanese knotweed in those formulations. So really look to resveratrol. So we got DIM for um, all of them, AMPK pathway ones, but DIM, um, more hormonal, berberine, we got microbes in the body, and then we got resveratrol, like one of the highest antioxidants, okay? Next one is similar to resveratrol in the fact that it's a really amazing um, antioxidant polyphenol, and this one is EGCG. EGCG. And so this one I hit it at too from green tea. This is a polyphenol extract found in green tea, some fruits and nuts and things like that. Really amazing for reducing inflammation, heart disease. Those are its top two. So inflammatory issues in the body and anything heart related. Um, also uh, brain activity because they found that this EGCG mixed with just a little bit of natural caffeine. And think about it, it's extracted from things like green tea, which we naturally have a little bit of caffeine in it. And they're showing that the combination of the EGCG with a little bit of caffeine, much more potent, okay? And so again, it switches us on this AMPK pathway. It's really good for cardiovascular, for heart, for cognition, for focus, and for inflammation. So this one would be 100 to 450 milligrams daily. So again, you're looking to split up, you know, a little bit in the morning, a little bit at night, but when taken with a little bit of natural caffeine, so say we have a little bit of matcha tea with it, you know, morning and night, much, much more powerful studies have shown, okay? So last one is one of my favorite all-time supplements. I can't say enough about it. And it's very much trending right now because of, um, you know, the virus and what we've been dealing with for the last year plus. But this is quercetin, okay? So if you guys haven't heard of quercetin, Quercetin is an amazing bioflavonoid that we find in a lot of different fruits, but specifically citrus fruits are replete with the bioflavonoids, quercetin, etc. So this would be like the pithy part of the rind, right? The stuff that people try to peel off. And I always talk about black bioflavonoids for their ability to really be amazing for the vascular system. They really strengthen the arterial and vein system of the body. And if you think about that, like think about a, you know, peeling that rind off and looking how the, the white pithy part looks, it almost looks like 
the vascular system, doesn't it? And this is something that we teach in naturopathy is that we eat something because it looks like a part of our body. The walnut is good for the brain. The, um, the let's see, the figs, right? Figs for the testes or the grapes like mammary glands. We eat something because it looks like it. And so think about that pithy part. It looks like the vascular system. So it's been shown that all these bioflavonoids like rutin, you know, quercetin, hesperitin, all those things are really good for that. But um, quercetin has an amazing ability, of course, we're talking about it with this AMPK pathway to switch that on. So it helps with metabolic function, it helps drop uh, glucose levels in the body, helps burn fat, etc. It's super antiviral. So that's why it's trending a lot now, just like we hear about the hydroxychloroquine. It's got compounds like that. I make my own, in a sense. I take grapefruit, organic grapefruit rinds. You can get them at the Better Health Store. I peel it, I dehydrate it, and I grind it up in a grinder, and I take some of that in a smoothie every day. It's phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. So it's antiviral. It has also been shown to drop histamine levels in the body. So any of you guys that are suffering from seasonal allergies, et cetera, really, really stellar with, um, you know, the, the allergy response. So quercetin is great for that. Very, very anti-inflammatory. All of these are anti-inflammatory, but it is anti-inflammatory as well. And we already talked about the heart health as well. Okay. And the vascular health. So this one, you can push the milligrams, 500 up to a thousand milligrams a day. And again, spaced out is what I would recommend. So reviewing these all, we got DIM, for more hormones, your berberine, look to if there's microbial stuff going on in the body or gastritis. It also is a great stimulator of bile type, bile function in liver and gallbladder. So that is just gonna really help with digestion. Resveratrol and our EGCG for high, high, high antioxidants, brain function, inflammatory issues. Quercetin, if we're really concerned about viral issues or vascular strength, okay? So been so exciting to talk tonight. Um, I'm just looking forward to more classes in the future. If you feel like you're in the dark about anything that we talked about, or if you have more questions about anything that I didn't maybe go into enough, or you're just not clear on it, don't forget that you can email me. So it's Corey, C-O-R-E-Y, at Thrive, T-H-R-I-V-E, on, O-N, dot life, L-I-F-E, instead of dot com. Again, I really enjoyed tonight. So looking forward to the future. Thanks.